Hi there, I'm Black Bright, and I decided to do this video on terms that they use in immigration because it it suddenly dawned on me that you know you you watch a lot of um, videos and you listen to a lot of terms and you may not know the the definition of the terms. So I've taken this from the Mi Mi the Migration Advisory Committee. It's their definitions. What's interesting, though, is that there's not a definition for a foreign national. So I had to look that one up. It's got everything else. And I thought, why under such a legal document? Why would not they have that definition? But maybe it's because it's based on the EU withdrawal um, potential EU withdrawal. Anyway, um, foreign national is a person who is not naturalised citizen of the country in which they are living. It's anyone who is not a national of the country in which he or she is residing or temporarily sojourning. For example, a foreign national in England is someone who is neither an English citizen nor a permanent resident. So those are the ones who are on indefinite leaves to remain. That's the easiest way to put it, or on limited leave to remain. Anyway, going back to this um, document, which is in alphabetical order, and I hope it helps you to understand the terms a bit better. Um, indefinite leave to enter or remain is having, having de indefinite leave to enter or remain means that a person can stay in the UK without any time restrictions or conditions. Indefinite leave can lapse if the holder stays outside of the UK for a continuous period of more than two years or five years under the EU settlement scheme in line with the draft withdrawal agreement. Limited leave to enter or remain. A person who holds this immigration status has a time limit on his or her stay and it may also be subject to conditions. A long term a long term migrant. A long term migrant is an international migrant, a person who moves to the country other than that of his or her usual residence for a period of at least twelve months. So I would think that the majority of those who are in the country um, would be long term migrants and all those other little bits would be factored into that under, you know, to determine what category you are, whether you are a long term migrant with a leave to remain, whether you're a long term migrant with um, limited leave to remain, whether you're a long term migrant and an overstayer. And, uh, you know, all those kind of things, they're all cap um, captured under that one heading. A permanent residence under EU law. That's important that it's under EU law, because what happens is if we leave the EU, this is going to make a difference to permanent residence. Uh, under EU law, permanent residence is the right to live in the UK without conditions. This right can be gained by the European Economic Area, EEA, and Swiss nationals and their family members. Permanent residence is automatically gained when an EEA or Swiss national has lived lawfully in the UK for, in most cases, five years as a qualifying person under the Immigration EEA Regulations 2016. This means they have, ex they have been exercising their treaty rights, for example, through working, studying. This status is similar to having indefinite leave to remain under the Immigration Act 1971. So while this applies to the, e the EU nationals, you can you can transfer that translation to non-EU nationals because it's a similar it's a it's a similar thing. Don't know what happened there. Yes. Yeah, so um, permission permission to enter or stay in the UK means that a person has leave to enter or remain under the Immigration Act 1971. A residence card. Non-EEA citizens exercising EU law rights in the UK are issued with a secure biometric card based on the EU uniform format for resident permits. The card is issued to permanent residents 
non-EEA family members of EEA citizens and those who derive rights to reside in the UK under EU law. So you can see the EU has quite a stake here. Registration certificate. EEA, EU and Swiss citizens who register their status in the UK can apply for a registration certificate consisting of a vignette. And a vignette is one of those little stickers that says no recourse to public funds, uh, limited time and all that kind of stuff. I think it's, good. I think it's being replaced by the biometric um, permit now. Uh, right to abode. A person with a right to abode has the right to live and work in the UK without restriction. All British citizens have the right of abode in the UK. And as you notice, right to abode. That means only citizens have that right. Everybody else don't have that right. They can. And it can be approved via the um, naturalisation route. But as of now, it's only citizens that have the right of abode in the UK. So it does mean technically that, you know, you can be repatriated um, at any time if things go tits up, putting it crudely. Um, right to reside. This is an EU law term used specifically for EEA nationals or their family members. They have an initial right to reside for three months and then can reside in the UK if they are qualified persons exercising a treaty right following five years residence in the UK, according with EEA regulations, they automatically acquire a permanent right to reside. So if you're the EEA um, nationals will be able to take this from that and the um, non-EEU, the non-EU nationals can pick out from this what applies to them. Settlement, this applies to all. A set person settled in the UK if they are ordinarily resident and free from immigration time restrictions. Most people demonstrate this by having indefinite leave to enter or remain in the UK, in brackets, I-L-E, oblique R, because that's how sometimes you'll see it and you might think, what do those, what do those letters stand for? A person is also settled if they have acquired permanent residence under the EEA regulations. Those with settled status may be entitled to public funds and they are free to travel to and from the UK. Settled status can be lost if someone is outside the UK for two years or more or five years under the EU settlement scheme in line with the draft withdrawal agreement. Um, I think with, um, with non-EUs though, it's um, more than six months um, or 540 days so that is a bit different so you have to be careful with that one okay um, Schengen the Schengen area is an area compi comprising 26 European states that have officially abolished passport and any other type of border control at their mutual borders. The UK does not participate in the border and immigration aspects of the Schengen Agreement. We do, however, take part in the police and judicial cooperation aspects of the Schengen, but can choose to opt out. Um, so, yeah. Short-term migrant. A short-term international migrant is someone who visits a country other than that of his or her usual residence for a period of between one and 12 months. That's not to be confused with the visa, the visiting, the visitor's visa. Treaty rights. EU citizens have the right to move to another member state for up to three months and have the right to reside, provided that they continue to hold a valid passport or national identity card and do not become a burden on public funds. That's at no recourse to public funds. Uh, those who wish to stay longer and this period must be exercising treaty rights. That is, they must be self-employed, self-sufficient or studying. If they're not working or self-employed, they must have sufficient financial resources to support themselves and any family members residing with them and comprehensive sickness insurance. And, you know, when you're when I'm reading this out to you, it does apply to the EU citizens, but transfer as much as you can to yourselves because what applies to one is can be transferable and it can give you a kind of insight to what is expected of you 
as a non-EU citizen. Okay, that's why I'm sharing it with you. Um, visa. A visa is a form of entry clearance which is evidence of a person's eligibil eligi eligibility to enter the UK. So those people who come in on boats, those people who come in under lorries, um, in cars, they of course won't have a visa and they're what I call for um, illegal immigrants as opposed to overstayers, which I think is a totally different ball game. Um, visitor. A visitor is a person who comes into the UK for a temporary purpose, for example as a tourist, to visit friends or family or to carry out a business activity. UK national. Uh, UK national is a term referred to in this document to describe those people who are regarded as UK nationals for EU law purposes. Very important. The term United Kingdom national is not defined in the nationality law of the United Kingdom. However, the UK has made various declarations setting out the definition of its nationals for community oblique EU law purposes. Hmm. Deduce from that what you may. In the declaration made by the United Kingdom in 1982, this is going to be quite technical, oblique oj.c.23, close brackets, it was stated that the term UK national when used for community oblique EU purposes is to be understood to refer to a British citizens, b persons who are British subjects by virtue of part four of the British Nationality Act 1981 and who have the right of abode in the United Kingdom and therefore exempt from United Kingdom immigration control and c British dependent territory citizens who acquire their citizenship from a connection with Gibraltar. The UK affirmed this definition in a further declaration annexed to the final act of the Intergovernmental Conference, which adopted the Treaty of Lisbon, in brackets OJ, 2010, C, 83, oblique 335, close brackets with the exception of the update, so the reference to British dependent territory citizens in brackets as referenced above at point C, close brackets, should be read as meaning British overseas territories citizens. <sighs> what a mouthful. But yeah, um, I think it's important for you to know the terms. And like I said, a lot of that relates to the EU and EEA. And, but a lot of that information is transferable. And you know, sometimes people give information for their nationalities, like you'll, you'll listen to um, immigration lawyers who are um, basically um, appealing to their Asian communities, Filipino communities, French communities, whatever, providing it's in English, you can use that information to your benefit. So don't dismiss rules that apply to different nationalities because a lot of it is factored in to apply to the foreign nationals, i.e. people of colour in the UK. So don't become complacent, don't make any assumptions and we'll be on the right train. That's all for now. Bye bye.